is the author of the School for Good and Evil series. Now he's out with another book, Beasts and Beauty, Dangerous Tales. I'd like to welcome New York Times best-selling author, Soman Chanani, to Sidewalks Entertainment TV. Hi, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. So your book series, The School for Good and Evil, sold over 3 million copies worldwide. Now you have another book, Beasts and Beauty, Dangerous Tales. Yeah, let's take a quick trip down memory lane before your bestsellers. How did you start your career as an author and what was your experience like getting your first book published? You know, I never thought I would be a writer. It's what I was good at, but I always thought it would be a little lonely and scary to write for a living. <laughs> you know, I always did it just more for fun. And so I tried to go the conventional route of, you know, working in business. I was a pharmaceutical consultant for a bit and I kept getting fired. Fired because I was writing in the corner. I was secretly writing my stories in the corner. And so okay. it became very clear that at some point um, I better do it for a living. <laughs> Otherwise <laughs> I was going to just keep getting fired. So um, I finally wrote my first book, The School for Good and Evil. And um, yeah, it got published by HarperCollins and then it just kind of exploded, you know, and that became my life for 10 years. I wrote six of them. Um, it was just sort of a, a phenomenally successful series around the world. And so I got to have many great adventures and meet so many amazing people because of it. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I was looking for, for something new to do, uh, you know, after it was all done. Yeah, so I think I actually read, I briefly read somewhere that The School for Good and Evil actually started out as a screenplay and then it turned into a book. Yeah, I was thinking of it as a movie first, you know, because I had um, gone to film school and sort of uh, worked a lot in film and I thought it would be a cool movie, except it just kept get, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then I started to realize that if I was going to control this universe, I really needed to do it as a novel first. So, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of how it uh, had its incarnation. It started as a film and then it got too big. And so a book was the only containment that could hold it. So uh, apart from your work as an author, do you think you'll return to filmmaking as well? Well, School for Good Evil is being made into a movie by Netflix. Oh, yeah, it comes that's right. Next year, it just finished filming. Uh, I was in Ireland for most of the summer. Um, it stars Charlize Theron, Kerry Washington, Lawrence Fishburne. Um, it's a huge movie, one of Netflix's biggest ever. So that's definitely giving me my filmmaking fix. Um, and, you know, we'll see what happens with Beast and Beauty. I'd love to see that on screen, too. So I'll just keep writing books and, and sort of um, taking them over to, to film and TV, and hopefully they'll find a life there. Yeah, so now that you mentioned the film adaptation of The School for Good and Evil, uh, how involved were you in making the movie? Were you on set? Uh, were you, did you participate in casting? I mean, I was pretty involved. I was on, I was on set and, uh, you know, it, it was in development a long time. So I was, you know, constantly there kind of helping make sure that it found a way to be faithful to the book and yet also worked as a movie. And then we were lucky enough to have Paul Feig come on as a director who was just a genius and who I love very much. And so once he came on, you know, he's such a great director that his vision was so kind of in line with what the book is and what the book represents. And so, um, you know, from there it was sort of off to the races, letting, letting Paul do his thing and being there when he needed me. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, I was as involved as, as I needed to be, I think, for it to, to turn out uh, well, which I hope it will. Now, before you came out with uh, Beasts and Beauty, Dangerous Tales, you came out with your book, One True King. Now, how did you decide that One True King was to be the final installment of The School of Forget and Evil? Well, I always plan to do the School for Good and Evil in sets of threes. So the school years are books one, two, three, and then the Camelot years are books four, five, and six. And so I always knew six was gonna be sort of the grand finale because they're such big, complex books. You know, there's a hundred characters, there's 50 plot lines, there's 40 kingdoms. It's like writing Game of Thrones. And so you have to have a very clear map. So Beast and Beauty, Dangerous Tales. Now tell me a little bit about this book. So this is the new book. Uh, it just came out today. I'm super proud of it. Um, it's my attempt to, I'm a fairy tale lover, obviously, because that's what the School for Good World is about. And it's my attempt to go back to the original stories, uh, the ones that we all grew up with, the ones that in a lot of ways are dead now because they just don't really fit 
the world we live in and to make them relevant again. Because it's very convenient to just be like, okay, you know, we don't need these stories anymore. We can just forget them. But throughout time, no matter what culture, no matter where you are, these stories just reappear again and again and again. There's always a Cinderella story in every culture. There's always a Snow White story in every culture. They're in our DNA. They're stories that are fundamental to who we are. And so I felt like, okay, but then we need to redo them. We need to make them more present and more relevant again. Um, and so I tried to just start from scratch as it was in the 800s, knowing what the world would become today and just rewrite them. So how long did it take you to write Beasts and Beauty, Dangerous Tales? And where did your inspiration come from for your reimagined version of these fairy tales? I mean, I think it just, inspiration came from the world, the looking at the way we live today and, and finding a story for each kind of thread. You know, Red Riding Hood sort of has allusions to the kind of Me Too rise up. Um, Snow White is about the only black girl in her kingdom. You know, uh, Bluebeard is uh, about sort of child trafficking. Like there are these themes in the world that, that are sort of on the underbelly of our world today and using the stories to kind of highlight them. And it took about, I'm trying to think, from start to finish, maybe seven, eight months. You know, I did it during the, the pandemic. So earlier you did briefly mention that, uh, uh, mention about Beasts and Beauty, Dangerous Tales becoming, having a, a film adaptation. Now, has there been any movement as far as that becoming, that becoming a film? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's being produced by the same producers as the School for Good and Evil, uh, Joe Roth and Jeff Kirschenbaum, who did Maleficent and Snow White and the Huntsman and Alice in Wonderland. So, um, you know, we're in early stages. Uh, we're taking our time a bit, but we will uh, hopefully get there soon enough. That is amazing. I'm very much looking forward to that. So as an author, you, you inspire your readers. What has been the most memorable feedback that you've gotten from a fan? I think, you know, anytime somebody picks up your book and lives in your imagination uh, and puts everything away and just gets lost in it, I feel like that's the highest compliment there is. So anytime anybody tells me they've finished the book, I don't know. I feel like you've had a very sort of like deep, intimate experience with them where they've read your thoughts. So, um, yeah, I just think anyone who reads a book, I feel sort of communed and connected with. So what message would you like to send to your fans that have been following you since the beginning of your career? I mean, I think you know, I have a lot more to say and, and represent in the world, you know? So I think I'm just thankful for uh, the readers of the School for Good and Evil who now pick up Peace and Beauty. Uh, and I hope I just keep getting to, to, you know, tell edgy, provocative stories that make us re-examine the world we live in. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, wonderful work. Uh, and again, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. My pleasure. Thanks again. Everyone, that was Soman Chinani, author of Beasts and Beauty, Dangerous Tales. You take care, Soman. Thank you. For more full-length celebrity interviews, visit SidewalksTV.com.